Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with an updated guide for 2024 for the epic hell difficulty of Enraged Blazing Emissary. The footage you're seeing on your screen was recorded last night over on my Twitch stream, which you can find at twitch.tv forward slash IM underscore TSU. This video is designed to teach you the mechanics of the epic hell fight, as well as show you example teams for each phase. Since this is end game content, there will be teams that use Moonlight 4 stars, Moonlight 5 stars, limiteds, and possibly collab heroes, but I did try to keep those to a minimum wherever possible. This video is divided up into various phases of the fight, and I've included several example teams for each phase. There are going to be two examples for phase one because it's the easiest, five for phase two because I think it's the hardest, and finally three for phase three. Use the timestamps below to check out each of the teams. Let's start by jumping into phase one. This, in my opinion, is by far the easiest phase of the entire fight. The boss has a permanent speed buff, which can be dispelled by landing four single target attacks on the turtle while it has one or more debuffs. If a move innately has a debuff on it and it lands, that counts as one of your four attacks. Other than that, just pick the strongest DPS you have preferably ones with counter considering how often the boss attacks in this phase. Me personally, I think Blue Shoe is the best overall DPS for this floor. I also used Brig in the footage on your screen because his S3 is a guaranteed defense break and that guarantees me one of the four turtle stacks. If I use my S3 on the turtle, cool, one of the four out of the way. When he gets full fighting spirit, it always targets the turtle, so that's again another one of the four stacks that I actually need. For the third character, I use Seaside Bologna because she just has good damage and a lot of debuffs in her kit, but you can use basically anything that you want here. In the past, I've used Rem from the ReZero collab, and even on stream, I completely subbed her out with Angelic Montmorency for sustain, so that's definitely an option. Do note that you don't need to use all blue units. Here on your screen is an example team using martial artist Ken, per a request from my Twitch chat. Inos 2.0 is here for sustain, but she also has a debuff on her S1, making her great for picking up the four turtle stacks, assuming that your effectiveness is high enough. For the other character, you can choose whatever you want as long as they have some form of debuff in their kit and high enough effectiveness. I chose Assassin Kartua for the provoke on his S1 and the nearly guaranteed stun and defense break on the S3 even though the character kind of doesn't really have the best synergy with martial artist Ken. Regardless, once you've dispelled the speed buff from the boss by hitting the turtle, take the boss under 70% health and get ready for phase two. Phase two is probably the hardest phase of the fight in my opinion. If you don't disable the counter buff on the boss, when you move into phase three, he will have a 100% chance to counter and blind your team. This makes doing consistent damage a nightmare and you'll feel like you have to constantly gamble in order to win. Note that I said gamble to win. It's not impossible. The easiest team to clear this phase with is Luna Cleave, in my opinion. Simply Soulburn Flan, use her S2 on Luna, then use Luna's S3 to hopefully win the fight. If you don't have enough damage, use a guaranteed dual attacker to finish him off. I used Camilla for this because she has a guaranteed defense break in her kit and is a 3 star. You could also use Cerise. Do note that this team bypasses the mechanics, so like I said, you're gonna have to deal with that 100% chance to counter and blind your team. Now, if you don't wanna have to deal with that counter or blind debuff, then you need to do the fight properly. And to do that, you have to hit the boss five times with an ally that has two or more buffs on them. What makes this really difficult is that the boss is constantly dispelling buffs from your team and the lanterns that accompany him steal buffs from your allies. Considering the amount of AoE attacks that the boss has that burn your entire team, well, it's going to go down very quickly if you don't have a lot of cleansing capability as well as sustain. On top of that, the lanterns will counter every time that they have one or more buffs on them and someone on the enemy team is attacked. You're going to want to bring a Soul Weaver that has at least two or more buffs in the kit as well as some form of cleanse and sustain. Having characters that can dispel boss from the lanterns is also a plus. The second team that I want to highlight is the one on your screen now, and that is one that is built around Angel of Light Angelica, as well as Maid Chloe. 
AOL is great for this fight because her S2 gives skill nullifiers whenever the boss uses an AoE attack and it will also cleanse some of the burn stacks. Her S3 is also super good because it keeps buffs off of the lanterns, which means they're not going to actually be able to counter you. As for why Maid Chloe is great, it should be fairly obvious. Sustain, cleanses, her S3 gives two buffs in order to help you disable the boss's mechanics. Once you have the counter buff actually off of Dazzled Magnar, try not to attack it anymore with Maid Chloe or Angel of Light Angelica. Do note that whenever you hit the boss, he does receive a speed increase and attack increase for the rest of the fight. It's kind of like a soft enraged mechanic. And considering AOL and Maid Chloe don't really do a lot of damage, you're better off trying to silence and push back the lanterns and stun the lanterns for free CR on your team then give the boss the actual speed and attack stats, so keep that in mind. The last thing I want to talk about here is the damage dealer, which I chose Savior Auden, but you can choose pretty much any damage dealer of your choice. Auden is a free-to-play option that is basically top tier. She also just happens to be a light DPS, which means that you get the triple light character bonus for Advent. In case you don't know, if you play two or three characters of the same element, you do get a bonus. So there really wasn't a reason to not go for the triple light bonus, especially when it is a free to play character that is incredibly strong like Savior Odd. Again, you can play pretty much any DPS of your choice in this slot. And that's pretty much all there is to say about this team. It's probably the slowest one here in the entire video, but it's definitely one of the most consistent. I think there is a more consistent team though, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But first, let's talk about another team that's really really easy to actually assemble and that's this one here of Dien, Raz, and Sermia. You're going to want to start this fight by soul burning Dien in order to actually have her cooldowns up very very early. After that you use Raz's S3 for not only the defense buff but to get your first stack. Then you want to use Dien's S1 here in order to pick up your second stack holding your S2 for its cleanse capability. After this you S1 with Sermia and pray that you get her exclusive equipment to proc so you get an extra attack use the s2 here to cleanse any potential burns and then you use raz's s2 soul burn in order to pick up your fourth and fifth stack super easy to get the counter buff down and then after that if you get the defense break you just s3 with sermia that should be a kill but if you don't get the defense break then obviously you just have to try to sustain and tough it out using the extra cooldowns that you afford yourself by soul burning tn's s3 at the start our next two teams are basically very similar. They revolve around the limited hero, Biblis. Biblis is actually just kind of ridiculous for this. And in my opinion, if you have Biblis, I think she is the best character for this second phase. Essentially, every time the lanterns counter, you're going to get free CR, free healing. You're going to get to be able to strip all of their buffs. You're going to get to defense break them, which means more damage. She's just honestly kind of insane for this fight. After that, all you need to do is take your choice of sustain or a tank. In this case, I went with Unbound Knight Arwell because it's a free-to-play option that just happens to start with two buffs being Barrier and Escort, which means very, very quickly we can get that counter buff off the boss. That's the main reason that we chose her. And then for the footage that you see here on your screen, it's Save Your Odd because, again, strong, powerful, free-to-play DPS. You can obviously choose a blue DPS in this spot. You could use something like Luna, for example, or whatever have you. Just as long as it's a character that has pretty good DPS, Biblis will keep your team sustained with her various different blinds, the barriers, the silence plus pushbacks, the built-in healing from the passive, and obviously help you turn out huge damage thanks to her consistent source of defense breaks. Again, all you really need to do is just choose a sustain in this case, again, Arwell and your choice of damage dealer. Moving on to the last team that's here. It's basically the same exact team as the fourth one. This one, I just wanted to really highlight how strong Lionheart Sermia is here. So again, if you just happen to have this Moonlight 5 star, she's probably one of the better damage dealers you could choose. Because again, Lanterns constantly counter and she puts up some pretty impressive damage numbers. If you play her with a defense breaker and some form of sustain, you'll very, very quickly pick up a kill here. Again, I just used the same template as the last team that we used. Biblis, I think, is just the best sustain here because uh, she just gives you barriers, healing, 
defense break. She gives you basically everything that you could possibly want here. And then obviously control on the lanterns with blind and silence. And then RL here again for not only the sustain, but being able to very quickly get rid of that actual counter bomb. Again, really, really strong team. Not too much different than the fourth team. But again, I really wanted to highlight how strong Lionheart Sermia is here if you actually do have access to her. I'm just going to let the rest of this fight play out for Lionheart Sermia, and when you're ready, we can proceed to Phase 3. Phase 3 is fairly straightforward. Just kill Magnar before he kills you. First comp is going to be Corinne, who will use her defense break along with her S3 to put down a bunch of bleed stacks on Magnar. Obviously, I got resisted here from my torn sleeve and my EE didn't really do a whole heck of a lot. You use Amelia to give attack buff and cleanse to Sigret. Then you soul burn Sigret's S2 and her S3 to hopefully pick up a kill here again. I wanted to show this example because I didn't actually get enough bleed stacks, but you can see I can still very comfortably finish off the boss and pick up the kill. But what happens if you don't have Amelia? Well, here you go. Here's the variation of the same team that uses Elena instead of Amelia and Flan instead of Corinne. At the start, you soul burn Elena or use S3 with her new exclusive equipment to cleanse the burn stacks. After that, you can either go S3 and lap back around with Flan or Soul Burn S3 S2 with Flan into Sigret. Once it's Sigret's turn, just Soul Burn S2 S3, and that should pick up a kill. And just like before, if you just don't have enough bleed stacks or enough damage, you should very, very comfortably be able to pick it up. Here in this footage, you can see I hold Elena's S3 and decide to go for the Soul Burn S1, and I can very comfortably pick up this kill. The final team is a proof of concept team. The footage itself isn't actually of a clear, but that's because I'm on a uh, pvp specter tenebrae if i was on a base speed rage set there's pretty much no way that i wouldn't kill here again same setup to use s3 to cleanse the burns or use a soul burn of your choice then use soul burn flan here s3 s2 into specter and considering she'll have attack buff crit damage buff and the boss will be defense broken and you have full amount of souls there's just no way this thing wouldn't kill on a rage set so yeah those are pretty much my teams for the epic hell version of the fire advent let me know what teams you use down in the comment section below, so hopefully it can help out other players. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.